thank you so much for this time together here in your presence. You're awesome. You're wonderful, God. And it's wonderful to be your people. You're so high and lifted up, yet you care about us. And God, we just sent you. You're rooting us on. Your word said that there's a great cloud of witnesses that bear the testimony of your faithfulness all the way to the end. And then we're admonished in Hebrews 12 to run our race, even the race that's been set before us, and to run it with endurance, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher, <laughs> the alpha and the omega of our faith. And what a wonderful example, who for the joy that was set before him ran his race, which included the cross. And now, is seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercession. God, tonight I pray that you would impart the knowledge and the revelation of that part of Jesus, the enduring Jesus, the focused Jesus, the passionate Jesus, the purpose-driven Jesus, the victorious, overcoming Jesus, the Jesus who finished well. Impart that tonight. Impart strength. Impart wherewithal impart tenacity wow I feel the Lord impart tenacity tonight grow us up build us up strengthen us and we believe you for these things in Jesus name amen amen yeah yeah um, I want to talk tonight about relentlessly pursuing purpose. Relentlessly pursuing purpose. And I want to draw your attention to three sources of information. One is going to be the Bible. Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 through 3. And I don't even know what order. But we'll just see. Another is going to be a CNN article about a runner recently from Kenya who ran a marathon in Texas. Anybody hear about that? She ran a marathon in Texas. So we'll, we'll look at that. Uh, and then from Instagram. A post, I posted on Instagram today about the cost of actualizing greatness. Um, let me just tell you right now. Let me just put it out there. Purpose is hard. Destiny is hard. We want purpose. We want destiny. But it's hard. And it's not for the faint of heart. It's it, purpose and destiny will push you. If it doesn't push you to the point of you wanting to quit, you're not in your purpose or your destiny. Hey. If it doesn't drive you to the point of questioning everything. And wanting to just throw it all away, you haven't even begun <laughs> to step into your road of destiny. It requires passion. If it's purpose, even when you get to that point, there'll be something in you that won't let you quit. So the lady, um, the, the Kenyan runner who was in the marathon in Austin, Texas recently. It's amazing. So she's running this race, and she is two-tenths of a mile away from finishing the race. I believe she was in first place. She may have been in second place. I believe she's in first place. And she's running this race, and all of a sudden, she collapsed. Two-tenths of a mile away from finishing the race, she collapsed, right? And then she tries to get back up and run, but she can't. She falls again. You got to Google this article. It's amazing, right? I may tweet it out later. She tries to get up, and she falls down. 
and she tries to get up again, and she falls again. So now you're in first place. Anybody ever been winning? And then all of a sudden, she falls down. She continues to fall. She tries to get up. And so she can no longer run in this race. But guess what? She ain't finished. She's like, I may not be able to run, but I can crawl. She gets on her hands and knees and crawls over 400 meters to the finish line. She gets to the finish line. Her knees and her elbows are grossly bloodied. But she finishes. That's what you have to have. In other words, she, she, she wouldn't quit. She found the something that she had within her to keep going. And in her case, it was her knees and her elbows. Sometimes you may have to slow down you may have to reduce your expectation. This is for somebody. You may, you may have to reduce your expectation of how victory or completion is supposed to look like, but you can't quit. If you can't run, you got to walk. If you can't walk, you got to crawl. And if you can't crawl, you have to drag yourself on your elbows and your knees until you get to the finish line that God set you on. He didn't tell you how you were going to get there. He just said you have to get there, which means that if your legs go out, there is something else in you. I'm speaking in parables, but I want you to get it. If your legs go out, that does not mean you're out of the game. If the plan that you had fails... It just means that the plan that you had. And that just ought to move you to asking the question, God, well, then maybe there is a plan that you have to fulfill what you called me to. Oh, it was amazing. I read this thing and I'm blown away. And she ran. She fought so hard at the end that they had to give her. A champion's award. I'm here to tell you that destiny is going to cost you. If you think that it is going to be easy, you're grossly mistaken. Look at the cost of destiny. Let's look at Abraham real quick. Um, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. This is Abraham's destiny. Are we together? I'm saying this so that you can understand, because I believe that God is going to impart something tonight. He's going to activate. <laughs> wow, I feel heaven. I'm happy for somebody. He, he's going to activate a dynamic of his spirit that you are going to need in order to finish I'm not even going to say finish. In order to, to go this next leg of your race, because it's going to be hard. And if you, Raina, are not challenged with the, the, the option, the thought of quitting, you're not in destiny. I promise you if it's easy, it's not destiny. Hmm. Lord said to Abram, I love this, go from your country, that's NIV, can we do that in New King James, please? Please, if it's possible, if it's possible, I feel it's possible. 
with God all things are possible. I just feel. There it is. Now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country. Listen to this. From your family and from your father's house. The Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country. Mm, I might be able to do that. May not like my country. But then he says, from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. Now here we get real spiritual. Amen. Well, I would, if I was Abraham and God told me that, I would have just started walking right there. I would have just left my country and my father's house and, 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 and my family and, and I would just go. No, you wouldn't have. You would have needed confirmation and then more confirmation and then a whole bunch more confirmation. And then you need to pray on it and fast on it and ask somebody and go see the psychic and all this kind of stuff. Find a prophet and go look up under a rock and you would probably talk yourself out of it before it's all said and done. One of the most difficult parts of walking out purpose is letting go. Oh, that's it. That's it. There's something on it. There's something on it. There's weight on it. I feel right there. Right, 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 right there. Because what I have learned of the journey of purpose is the most consistent thing in walking out purpose is letting go. See, if I don't get to anything else, that right, 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 right there. Makes me stutter. We're right, 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 right there. If you do not become a master at letting go when God tells you to let go, you will be stuck and ultimately will fall short of your purpose. Because in life, we are accumulators in life. We're like pack rats. You ever been over somebody's house and they save everything? <laughs> well, you go over here in this room. And back in 1974. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we accumulate. And because we accumulate, we have oftentimes too much weight. When Jesus calls his disciples, he basically tells, he doesn't tell them to take all their stuff. What does he tell them to do? You got to read your Bible more. I promise some good stuff in there. He says, don't take anything. He said, don't take two coats. Don't take this. I think he even said, don't take no money. Who doesn't take money? He says, in order to walk with me, you're going to need to have your load be light. Oh, I feel this, this, this is it right here. This, this, is right, this is the message right here. I feel it. It's right in here. Right in this vein. And so we oftentimes find ourselves in conflict because God is saying move. And in order to move, you have to release this. And now God... And, and we and God, us and God, me and God, you and God are having a fight over whether or not we can bring this thing into our destiny. And it's almost like you tell God, well, God, if this can't go, I ain't going. As if you're going to win that fight. Uh, am I in the right room in here? I, I'm, I, I feel like I am because... The most consistent, the most consistent discipline that destiny requires is your ability to go and to leave things behind. That's why when God is touching Abraham, the very first thing he says is leave some stuff. Get out of your country, from your father's house, from your family, to a land that I will show you. Oh, wow, there's so much there. So much there. So from the onset, 
I'm setting, oh, I feel God. I, I'm setting the tone of what this relationship is going to be like. From the onset, I'm letting you know right now, this is my signature. This is my method of operation. If you are going to walk with me, you're going to have to acknowledge that certain people and certain things can't keep up. You just missed it. To walk with God. Destiny is a walk with God. And it means that this walk has a pace. I remember I took some people up to one of my canyons with me one of my you know and you, you the two canyons and in in well Fryman and Runyon well two in the general area Fryman and Runyon Fryman is a cute canyon it's cute you, you bring your beginners to Fryman Canyon come on somebody you you know what I'm talking about and Runyon has some cute courses but then Runyon also has come on somebody they got the one you know when you come in off the Hollywood side and most people don't even know this one is there but you just go and you just go left and you're like, where's the road? And you're like, mm-hmm. And it's dirt. You know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand if you get, come on, you get that in. I love this church. We got some healthy, right? And so I made the mistake once of taking, and I, and I was short on time, but taking some people with me on my right who were not fit And it messed with my workout so bad that I basically said, man, you do it at your pace. I'm going to finish this thing. Go get a sandwich down on Hollywood Boulevard. Come back and meet you at the bottom. And that's about what happened, too. Sandwich is gone. Checked some emails. Wrote a proposal. <laughs> Here's the point that I'm making. In, you have to understand, in order to walk with God, it's not God walking with you. It's you walking with God. You're, you're, when you walk in purpose and you walk in destiny, there's a God pace. And you have to keep up with that God pace. And sometimes you cannot walk at God's pace carrying people or things. So he's setting it. He's setting the tone right from the onset, and he's saying, yo, you're going to have to get out of your country. You're going to have to get away from your family, and you're going to have to leave your father's house. Sometimes that's the cost. Now, I'm not saying be disrespectful, and I am not saying be loveless. But I am saying you have to be so committed to your purpose and your destiny that you don't allow anything or anyone to get in the way. You know what, what I've learned? Some people will come around later. See, see, your destiny and your purpose is so powerful. And it is so light. And it is so bright. Watch this. And when it is carried out, it is so undeniable. That even people who doubted you. Even people that thought you were absolutely crazy, just loco in la cabeza, just, just gone. Just out of here will ultimately come around. See, that's what it means when it says, let your light so shine. Let your light your light so shine that men will see your good works and glorify your father. You got to let God do what he's going to do in your life no matter who understands. Because when you fully surrender to God and you allow your light to grow and it's going to go out, it's going to be so bright that no one will be able to deny that God is with you. And they'll praise God that you didn't listen to them. They'll praise the Lord that you did not take their advice.
There's a cost. If at least five people don't tell you you are crazy in your lifetime, you are not in purpose and destiny. There's a cost. So look, he says, now the Lord said to Abram, all this crazy stuff, we're just getting to know each other. And look at the demand you're placing on me. Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house. And then it gets even worse. He says, to a land that I will show you. He doesn't even tell him where he's going. I can see if you give me, Anthony, I can see if you give me some details. You know, kind of like say, you know, uh, you know, you got to do this, but I'm, man, I, I got it going on over here, right over here in Canaan. It's going to be off the chain for you. But he doesn't say anything. All he says is, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. So watch this. So sometimes you'll have to leave the familiar for the invisible. He doesn't tell you. He just says, I'm going to show you. Where? Don't worry. It's not your business. It's not your business. I'm God. I mean, it ain't like I don't have a place. I am God. I mean, I, if I do have stuff, I'm good for it. There's a cost. What's your purpose costing you right now? What has your purpose cost you? And what price would you pay for your purpose? A better question is, what price would you not pay for your purpose? I want to show you this quote. Uh, from Instagram. I, I quoted it originally like nine years ago. Like Drake reposted it and didn't give me credit. I'm like, come on, bro. <laughs> we know you deep, bro, but you that, you that 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 was me. That was me. I need some of that publishing, bro. I need some of that publishing. Go ahead and put that quote up there. You have that quote, Kenny? All right. Now, this is the direct quote from what I put. I use the word greatness because when I'm on Instagram, I like to be very universally appealing. (laughs) So, uh, truly, when I'm talking about greatness, I'm talking about purpose and destiny. And let me qualify purpose and destiny. Purpose and destiny is about what God has called you to. It's not about your idea, your dream of success or greatness or whatever. To be honest with you, and I mean this with all due respect, I don't really care about your dream. And I promise I mean that with all due respect. I don't don't really care about it. I don't care who you want to be or anything like that. That's great. God bless you. But that's not why we're here. What I'm concerned about is you realizing the epic idea that motivated your birth. I believe that God put you here because he has a a dream for you that's bigger than any dream that you can concoct in your own imagination. And I believe it's awesome. And I know it's it's uh, as you were born in this time, that dream, that purpose and that destiny cures something that's broken in the world right now. That's what I care about your dream. I'm not a hater. Hey, God bless you. That's wonderful. But I'm more concerned about you connecting with the God of heaven, the one who has the blueprints for your life, the one who knows you, and the one who will maximize your God-likeness to achieve something powerful on the earth. So, again, with all due respect, I don't really care about your dream. I care about God's dream for you. So, actualizing greatness really is about actualizing and realizing what God already knows about you. And so here's what I wrote. Actualizing greatness, your purpose, your destiny, will often cost you people, places, somebody forgot the S, people, places, and things. I I can probably take out the word often. I was being very soft because I was on Instagram. 
And I can probably replace it with the word always. Actualizing your purpose and destiny will always cost you people, places, and things. You'll have to move. You'll have to navigate relationships. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Relationships either ought to evolve or dissolve. Ooh. 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 Why? Why? Why should relationships either evolve or dissolve? Because you're evolving. And you've got to remember, a relationship is based on two people. So if you consider, you gotta, if you know about cars, think about an axle. The axle wouldn't even be significant if there weren't two wheels attached to it. And if one wheel is turning and the other wheel is not turning, then the axle gets broken. There is no relationship. So the axle is the relationship between those two turning or evolve are we together evolving wheels so if you are not evolving together the truth is you really don't even have a relationship and if you are not evolving something's wrong with you and if they are not revolve evolving then there's something wrong with them Relationships have to evolve. And you have to be honest. When was the last time you told somebody, we ain't hitting no more? And then, let me just talk for a second. And then you get caught up in this guilt. Anybody ever been there? You know that you have completely outgrown the relationship. And you feel bad about it. First of all, you are dishonoring your own personal evolution. Because basically what you're saying is, I feel bad about evolving. I feel bad about growing. I feel bad about becoming more. Why should you ever feel bad about growth? Ooh, I feel the Lord now. How can you dishonor God's purposes and his plans in you by dishonoring the fact that he grew you up? Okay, well, then you say, well, maybe. No, I'm not mad about that. I'm just mad that they couldn't come with me. <laughs> but here's the thing. That's not your business. Can you imagine if Jesus, come on, let's just, let's just look at Jesus for a second. Can you imagine if Jesus was bugging out because people wouldn't keep up at his pace? He just kept it moving. He kept it moving. Relationships should either evolve or dissolve. Cost you people, places, and things. Why places? Because some places can't hold you. As you evolve, as you evolve, listen, that's why I don't do membership here. You can be a member of the church, but I'm not going to have you sign up this thing. I'm a member, and I, and I, and you know, no, because if you evolve to a point to where the resources of this church cannot meet you anymore I want you to leave I promise I do I'm not one of those pastors like no well, you know, where are you going and why you gotta go no 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 cause we're not everything to everybody and I want you to grow I'm not a hater to your growth now don't leave and not grow don't 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 get mad and leave because just the fact that you got mad means you need to grow that's the worst time. Anyway, I. And that's not for me, because I'm actually benefited if you leave if you're mad. But for you, don't leave if you're mad. 
Leave because you have evolved. And what you need to facilitate your purpose and your destiny, you have elsewhere. Yeah. Often cost you people, places. You got to move sometimes. Why? Because sometimes what God is doing for you is in another state. Raise your hand if you're not from California. Well, whoop de do. Look at that there. <laughs> Purpose will almost always have you turn up somewhere else. Because it's like we, we get too familiar. We, we get too comfortable and stuck. You, you know, you, you can't, there's no mystery to your city anymore. You know where everything is and everybody knows your name. I mean, it's like you can't even grow. There's, there's no new experiences. I remember, I'll, I'll be honest, you know, so I, I, I was born in East Oakland and then grew up in Watts. I remember the first time I went to the beach. It was like, I'm in L.A. And it was like, wow, waves. It's like 10 miles west. Exposure. Exposure brings things out of you that you didn't even know were in you. I feel this thing. I just want Cost you some stuff. And then when you have to give up that stuff for purpose, don't look back. It's always going to be in front of you. And sometimes, I'm almost done. Because we're just talking and we're going to pray. But, 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 but sometimes we have this this longing for the past. There was a family pulled up. This is a funny story. My wife wanted to smack me. But there's a family. They ring our buzzer. I'm like, hello. I was in a meeting. They're like, hi. Um, you know, this is the house that I grew up in as a child. <laughs> That's great. It's my house now. Yeah, I was just wondering if, um, you know, me and my family are here, and we want to just come in your house and walk through your house. And, and you know, because this is I, just where I grew up, and I, you know, and I'm like, ma'am, can you, like, send me an email? We can set up an appointment, maybe. I get the sentimental value. That's cool, but I'm busy. I'm in a meeting right now. Well, no, we just flew in from New Jersey, and, you know, and we really want to see the house. I'm like, well, ma'am, I don't know you. I, you know, I, 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 please. I said, ma'am, hold on a second. I'll be right out. I'm like, Sarah, there's a lady with like seven kids. And <laughs> she wants to walk. So I ended up going out there and, and I walk and I so Sarah doesn't know what's going on she's on the phone and so so me this lady and her seven kids and her husband come to the door and I'm like baby I'm sorry I'm a nice guy you know like what so they walked to the house and that was all great and cool and everything but at the end of the day she put herself in this I could be a mass murderer come on in <laughs> you and all your little kitties Because she was trying to connect with something that, watch this, here's the truth, really doesn't even matter. It's gone. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, that, 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 that's for somebody. It's gone. Your little tree house (laughs) 
Savor the memory. I don't know what you would do in that treehouse, but whatever. If it was godly, savor the memory. And let it go. Because longing for the past is deception. It's deception. And I'll tell you why. A, you can't go back. B, even if you could go back, you wouldn't even fit. In, try to fit in that treehouse now. Even if you could go back, it wouldn't work in your life anymore. It's a lie. And C, what is it keeping you from focusing on? I'm telling you, there's nothing, I'm closing, we'll pray. There's nothing that has challenged me more in my progress in life than longing for yesterday. Major, nothing. Then the illusion if I could just turn the clock back, things would be different. That's not true. Or things would be different in a way that you wouldn't want. Hmm. Pursuing purpose relentlessly. You got to be a fighter. You got to fight against the longing for the past. You got to fight against the giants that stand in your way of destiny. You got to be in shape. When God says go, you got to go. You don't come. If you study Abraham's life, I wrote about it in the book. What made Abraham successful and he got to the point of his life where God had blessed him in all things is that he knew how to turn on a dime he knew how to change he sought God and he walked with God you know why he walked so far it's because he went where God took him where does God want to take you but you're committed to your country or you're committed to the ideals and the purpose and the vision of your family. I have five beautiful kids. I will never make them be like me. Don't you want your son to be a pastor? Nope. First of all, no. <laughs> that's a tall, that, that's, that, 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 that's price. That, that's, but if God calls him to that, then so be it. I would encourage him. Don't you want your boys to be pastors? Mm -mm. Don't you want your girls to be? Mm -mm -mm -mm. I want them to be what God has called them to be. Family business, whatever. I'm going to do my part, make sure that they do well financially. But that has nothing to do with their purpose and their destiny. I want you to be free, family. Your family, actually, Abraham's family needed him to leave them. You're not ready for that. Somebody just needed that right there. Some of you, your friends need you to leave them. Some environments need you to leave it so that you can become who you can only become outside of that environment. And maybe as you become that, you can come back to that environment and affect it. some things you cannot change from the inside. Even Moses had to leave and come back. Even Joseph had to leave and come back. 
And sometimes you get forced out. I feel heaven on that. I'm trying to land the plane. But sometimes you get, anybody ever got forced out of a click? And it was the best thing that could have ever happened to you? You were crying on your way out. <laughs> Why did it welcome you don't like me? And later on, you're like, I thank God for you. And I thank God for the decision that you made. <laughs> I want you to pay the price. Come on, stand with me. I want, don't, don't leave if you don't have to because now we're getting down to it. David, you remember Saul? David was stepping, oh, and there's a couple of other prophetic things. I don't want you to miss this about just the transition that's taking place and the promotions that are out there. But you remember David, when David was getting promoted, and he was getting ready to step into his thing. And Saul was like, here, take my armor, man. And David took him and he's like, no. I'm doing my own thing. I feel that thing. You're not called to be like your daddy. You're not called to be like your mama. You're not called to be like your pastor. You're called to be like you. Prophetically, um, I want you to watch some things. There's a lot of shifting that's taking place. Even if you look at some of the shifting that's taking place in, in companies, heads of companies are being removed. There are a lot of new things coming up new. There's a lot of opportunity right now for the faithful. If you've been faithful, now is your season. If you've been faithful, now is your season. I mean that. Faithfulness is everything. And sometimes it doesn't make sense. And you're like, man, I'm faithful to this. But it doesn't seem like it's getting me anywhere. Every time you serve in faithfulness, any time you serve in faithfulness, any time you serve in faithfulness, you are storing yourself up a harvest. That's why when Jesus would come and he would give the parables and he would always reward them, he would say, well done, you good and He rewards faithfulness. It's easy to be faithful to something that you enjoy. It's easy to be faithful to something that you feel is benefiting you. That's not even truly being faithful. That's low-key faithful, but it's kind of like selfish. It's being faithful to things when you cannot see the immediate benefit or the immediate fruit because that proves that you're really faithful mm -hmm. cuz you're not doing it under man you're doing it unto the lord but there's a there's a there's a lot of transition happening i think that if you've got things that are out there things that that you've been kind of procrastinating about get it together and do it I promise you, get it together and do it now because there is, there's a shifting and there are things that are up for grabs right now. I promise you it's true. I promise you it's true. Positions, opportunities, businesses. And you look at, even from a business perspective, you look at Facebook, and Facebook obviously is, they've been around, but they're still a powerhouse. Don't sleep on Facebook. That's because you're not on there. You're not the five other billion people or 500 million people that are on. Trust me. But Facebook was not Facebook. Twitter was not Twitter. All these things, they were shifts. They, there were shifts that took place, and people who were diligent were in position. The, the, the people who create these companies are no better than you. And oftentimes they're no smarter than you, but they're faithful. And they're committed and they're excellent and they're focused. So there's a lot of things that are up for grab, even in the, in the industry as well. People are getting old. Can I just keep it all the way real? And old is not a curse, right? Thank God. Old is not a curse. But people are getting old. They're getting old. They're getting old. 
And the eyes of the Lord are going to and fro throughout the, throughout the whole earth, looking to see who is promotable. Who's promotable? David didn't look promotable, but he was. Why? Because he was faithful. He was faithful. Upgrades and stuff. All right. Here's what I want to, here's what I want to pray. If you're here, and in particular as it related to leaving your father's house, in particular as it related to you knowing that you needed to, to let go of some things, talked about the past holding you and kind of keeping you, talked about the struggle and the difficulty of destiny. It's hard. It seems like it's costing. That's why most people, oh, I'm sorry. Put that thing back up there. I'm sorry. Put the quote back up there. I just want to finish the quote. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I promise I'm done. I'm three minutes over. It says, actualizing greatness will often cost you people, places, and things. The price is so high that many opt out and embrace normalcy. This is what I don't want for you. I don't want you to opt out because the price is high. I want to tell you up front that the price is high. The reason why people don't do it is because it costs more than they thought it was going to cost. And when you estimate the cost and it costs more than you estimate it, then you have a decision to make. Either you will pay more or you will back out. So I'm trying to tell you up front that it's a high cost. Yeah. Up front. Yeah. It's a high cost. Because I don't want you to believe the price is so high that you embrace normalcy. Because at the end of the day, there's either destiny or mediocrity. There is no in between. You're not ready. You, 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 I, I, I promise you. There's either destiny or mediocrity. One or the other. I promise you. What is mediocre? Mediocre is less than what it's supposed to be. Got to fight for it. You got to believe. You got to fight against those thoughts. You got to fight against those fears or fight through those fears. Fear is okay as long as you press through it. It's okay to be a little afraid as long as you have courage. Courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is when you move forward when fear is present. That's courage. Be strong and courageous. Actually, I agree what's going to be for the thing. Price is so high that many opt out and embrace normalcy. But, next verse. But, next part, please. But those who understand they were born for greatness and choose to weather the storms of transition and change will experience a limitless and unfathomable existence. It's just a storm, transition, and change. They're just storms. And what storm lasts forever? None. You got to weather it. And if you weather it, you're going to live in another dimension. You're going to live in another dimension. Can I be honest with you also? It'll be lonely a little bit. Especially in those transition seasons. Man, I, I, I really want to talk to people about destiny. I promise you. It's lonely. But you're not alone. And it's only lonely because you, you have become a pack animal. Mm. You... you, you you got used to the pack. Not realizing that the pack was never supposed to last forever. Think about a race. When you run in a race, everybody's in the pack. But the pack can't win. Only one person can win. Which means that at some point, you have to break out of the pack. I want us all to cross the finish line together. Everyone has their own finish line. You've got to run yours and cross yours. How bad do you want it? Are you afraid to stand out? And sometimes we want to hide in the pack because we're afraid to be great. We're afraid to get out there and be seen. So I'd rather hide. I'm so insecure. I just want to hide in a pack and 
Jesus died on the cross half naked in front of the whole world. I just feel this for somebody. If you're here and you just feel like God's calling you to greatness, as you hear these words, it's like you're in another universe. His words are hitting you so hard that it's like you're not even in this room. And you know, and there's some of you, and you, you're actually feeling right now, you're feeling, um, you're feeling a mourning. You're feeling a mourning, right? You, you almost want to, you almost want to, bless you, my friend. You almost want to, to cry. You feel a mourning. You know, the Bible says, blessed are those who mourn. And, and, and what that is, is you mourn when something is dying. When there's a separation. Because these words, you know, scripture talks about how the word is sharpening two-edged sword. It divides asunder, divides between soul and spirit. Okay? So what's happening is this truth is hitting you, and this truth is drawing a line of demarcation between your destiny and your past. Between your destiny and your present. And what's going on in your present right now. And so you're already beginning to feel that the separation from what you have to separate yourself from in order to realize this. And you know what I'm talking about? But there's a cost, family. And I just want you to understand the cost. But let me tell you something. I promise you, it's not all cost. I promise you, there is joy. Let me, let me, how can I put this? There, there is, you will look at your life through the cost, you will look at it and you will have no doubt that God is with you, that his hand is upon your life. And the things that show up in your life could have only been shaped in the hand of God. You will know that you will not question. Now that you won't question. You will never question whether or not you're with God. Your only struggle will be, man, but I had to let go of so much. But the reason why you keep going and the reason why you keep moving forward is because you know the hand of God is on your life. It's going to be good. So in Mark chapter 10, it was right after the rich young ruler didn't get his upgrade because he was so committed to what he had. And Peter says, we've left all and followed you, God. And Jesus says, let me tell you something. Yes, indeed, you have given up a lot. Yes, you have paid a great price to walk with me. But let me tell you something. There is not one person who has given up anything to walk with me that will not receive 100-fold, which is a ridiculous exponential blessing. 100-fold, everything that they gave up to walk with me. It says, now in this time and afterwards eternal life. Here, I feel like saying this for some of you. Um, he, he talked about there's no one who has, le who has left. And he talked about mothers, fathers, brothers, right? I'm not trying to break up families, but hear me. He says, who will not receive 100-fold. Purpose has a way of attracting to you other purpose people. And the quality of those people. You, you, I, mm. Because it takes you becoming somebody. To walk in purpose, which means that the full quality of who you are is manifest. Your quality from the start, but you begin to live like that quality. And you begin to manifest that quality. And as you do so, purpose is like a lane. It's a lane. And there are amazing people in that lane. And in that realm and in that world. And so you may have had to give up 
temporarily a natural brother. Or in some cases, a natural mother. But the promise of God is that if you do that for my sake and for the gospels, for the kingdom, for your purpose and your destiny, then I'm going to give you that back 100 fold. And we don't know what that's going to look like. But what I've experienced is quality people. Quality. Quality. Full of character. Full of love. Get you. Know you. And so you're trying to hold on here when God is trying to get you to something greater here. And you got to go. You can't stay the same. I promise you, you can't stay the same. And you can't always know. Sometimes God tells you to let go before he puts the new thing in your hand. But you got to trust him. Because if God tells you, if he puts the new thing in your hand and then tells you to let go, that's not faith. Who wouldn't let go? He says, let go of this, that, this, and that to a land that I will show you. So what you're grabbing onto is the promise that God is going to bring it to pass. I want this for you so bad. I wouldn't trade my life for nothing. As hard, as costly, oh my God, as costly. But I wouldn't trade it for nothing. It's what he said. He said, look, it's going to be hard. He said, you're going you know, to lose stuff. He said, but I'm going to be with you. And I'm going to give you all the other stuff anyway. His, his word is true. The word that he speaks to you is true. It's always true. Got an incredible future. Joy. And it's not so hard that you can't give it. Anything that God requires of you, you have the capability to give. I promise you. You have it to give or you wouldn't ask. God will never ask you to give something you don't have. He asked you to give because you have. He didn't ask Abraham to sacrifice Isaac until he had Isaac. He didn't ask him for Ishmael. He asked him for Isaac. He'll never ask you to give something you don't have. If you're here and you don't know the Lord and you want to know the Lord, I want you to come. I want to pray for you as well if you're here and and you want to know this, Lord, I don't know if I talked about him tonight. You're like, uh, he costs too much. No, life costs a whole lot more without him. Trust me, a whole lot more without him. Trust me. If you're here, you don't know the Lord, I want you to come. We're going to pray. We're done. We're going to pray if that's you. If you're here and you just want to step back in, maybe you were more touched by some of the things that I talked about, about how life is getting real. Where, where, where have we come in a, in a world and a society where, where, where mass murder is produced in excellence? It's produced with high production value. Mass murder. Graphic mass murder is produced in excellence. And maybe you got touched more because you realize that you need to tighten up spiritually. I Instagram something else the other day, and I'm like, you know, you know, God's word and the scripture is really is, is, is of little value in seasons of peace and prosperity. But when real life starts happening, even according to how it's already been pre-predicted in the scripture, all of a sudden, we want to go back to it. Maybe you're here, and you just want to draw closer to God. You know God, but you just feel like, you know what? In these times, I need to be closer to God than ever before. If that's you, I want to pray for you. I want to pray that God touches you in a special way. If that's you, I also want you to come to the altar right now. You just know 
I don't want us to be so caught up in our own thing that we don't realize. God bless you. I see you. That, that we don't realize how close we need to be to God right now. We need to be close. There's all sorts of decisions that opportunities and right now we need to know which opportunities to take we used to say in dominoes not all money is good money right we need to be so close to him and you need I was reading about a couple and one actually they both have been to this church um, but they weren't dating and uh, and they end up dating and then uh, he threatened her and pulled a knife on her and all this kind of stuff and you know and and Prior to that, they had cute photos on Instagram together and all for each other and all that kind of stuff. And next thing you know, they're on TMZ, you know, because, you know, you, you got to know what, you, what you're dealing with. You can't be so desperate for love that you choose wrong. Let me tell you, you don't think that there was a word from God in the spirit for her not to. There's always a word in the spirit from God. There's always a. Something that God will give you to protect you, to warn you. So if you're here and you just want to, you just feel like you need to draw closer to God. You need God in your life. You're like, God, look, I don't want to do this thing without you. If that's you. I want you to come as well. We're going to pray. We're done. We're so far over the time. But I just want to make sure that, 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 that every heart that's pricked is included in this prayer. If that's you, just come. Don't worry about who's looking. Just, just come if that's you. We're going to pray. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for just this time here with you. And Jesus, when the time was right, you always gave your children deeper words. You talked about the cost. And God, I just thank you, Lord, that that tonight is a night like that. Where you're really speaking to your sons and daughters and and telling them, Lord God, what it costs to, to really walk this thing out. And also the great blessing and the dimensional existence that takes place when we lay it all down. And Father, you've touched every heart and you know how you've touched that heart and how you've touched that way. And I thank you, God, that when you invite us to the altar for growth, it's not a growth that we can do our own selves. It's a yielding to you. It's a just saying yes to you. And you begin to impart within us the very word that you spoke to us. And so we receive that right now. We receive strength to do purpose and destiny. We receive confirmation and clarity about moves we need to make. And we align ourselves with divine support that there are a great cloud of witnesses backing us up right now. That destiny might seem lonely, but the truth of the matter is there's a great cloud of witnesses on that road giving testimony and bearing witness. I thank you, God, even for the angels that are assigned to our destiny to make certain that we don't fail, but that our way is prospered. It's wonderful, God. Lord, lift guilt and shame, God. And God, even as... Lord, some felt in their spirit a little sense of of mourning, a little sense of uh, of almost a grieving, because because something there's a season that's passing, there's a there's a relationship that's breaking, there is a there's something that 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 can't go that is being separated and severed, and I thank you, Lord God, that you're giving the strength hmm, and the stick to itness. That it won't be, I was supposed to move, but then I, I, I went back. But that there would be just a strength and a conviction that would come over your children right now. That they would lay hold of destiny and not look back. I thank you for the doors that you will open in front of them. Wow. Whew. I just hear, I hear God saying, trust me. Because some of you are going to leave things that you think provision is connected to. But I hear God saying, provision is always connected to me. 
it's always connected to me. It's never in a person. It's never in a job. It's always in me. It's in me. Because there was something connected to your provision that was your compromise. And God is saying, trust me. So God, seal this word in the hearts and the minds of your people. God, I thank you for those who are opening their hearts to you for the first time. I thank you for those who are recommitting. They're saying, God, I'm drawing closer to you. I pray that you would meet them in a profound way. Please repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your word to me. Thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for Jesus. Thank you for making him who had no sin to become all of mine. You put it in his body. All my limitation, all my failures, all my insecurities, all my weakness, all my rebellion. You put in his body, nailed it to the cross and put it to death. I thank you that I'm free. And as he was raised up, I'm raised up too. I'm strong and I'm above my weakness. Now, God, today, I'm choosing to walk out my purpose and destiny. God, where you say go, I will go. What you say do, I will do. I'll let go if you tell me to let go. I'll say goodbye to people, to places, and to things in order to be with you and walk in my destiny exclusively this is a new day I embrace it now Holy Spirit fill me up I need your strength I need your power I need your sight enlighten me show me the way that I am to walk in I thank you that my steps are ordered by you Hallelujah. And I cannot fail. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Love you so much. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious towards you. May he lift up his countenance over you and grant you shalom, shalom. Love you very much.